Hi, my name is Georgie and welcome to Media Pool. In this video essay, I'm going to be taking a look back and reflecting on my time during the viral video module by comparing and contrasting my two videos I got to create in regards to viral video theories. I will discuss how Nahon and Hemsley have cemented the idea of the virality in media and how Burgess's steps framework of contagious characteristics helped me reach virality in both my videos. In the second part of the video essay, I'm going to be discussing how my teamwork skills have strengthened and developed throughout my time on the module, specifically taking a focus on my second video, as that was a group-based project. I will examine how our group moved through Tuckman's small group development stages. For the structure of this video essay, I'm going to be taking a look at Cobb's experimental learning theory, as it suggests that we build knowledge by the transformation of experience, meaning that by reflecting on my experience in this module, I can learn more and therefore take it with me to use in the future. This means I'll be able to create plans of actions to ensure I continue to utilise what I have learnt with me after university and into my job. Firstly, there are three features to virality, according to Nahon and Hemsley, which are rapid sharing and diffusion, cross-network transmission and a sharp acceleration in the rates of exposure. Therefore, time and space are crucial elements in what goes viral. Keeping this definition in mind and taking a look at the performance of my videos, we can see that there are some features of virality, even though the videos are completely different genres. My first video project consisted of three one-minute videos for TikTok on student mental health produced as a digital activism mini-series, and my second video was a group project to produce a four-minute e-learning YouTube video on the origins of spin. Looking at the performance of the videos, both showed a sharp acceleration in rates of exposure feature of virality, with the YouTube video peaking within the first day and the TikTok videos peaking within the second or third day. Both of my videos then started to decline into the afterlife phase of the life cycle of viral media. Even though my TikToks got more views than the YouTube video, the sharp acceleration was still there at the beginning for both videos. So we know the definition of virality and that both video projects saw the sharp acceleration, but how did these videos do this? There are six contagious characteristics according to Berger to which you can mould your video around to generate virality. These include social currency, triggers, emotion, public, practical value and stories. If we take these characteristics and look through the video projects, you'll be able to see that several of them are incorporated and work together to create the virality, though each video do contain different combinations of these characteristics. For example, across my TikToks, I ensured I covered at least four elements in each video, including social currency, triggers, emotion and public. However, some videos also included practical value or stories, depending on how and what I was portraying. Whereas in my second project, my team and I used different characteristics as the video was an e-learning video to market the university. This meant that the practical value took more of a role in the virality than emotion and public did in my previous project. This was due to the fact that we turned an academic article into a video, meaning the relevance of practical value was greater than the emotions and public characteristics of my TikTok due to the providing new information, helping to simplify and condense a complex idea and saving people time of reading a nine page journal article. This made me realise I didn't need to squash all the characteristics into the video as it evidently shows that Burgess' framework is truly less like a recipe and more like tasty salad toppings. The different elements of his framework are selected for different videos which help produce sharp acceleration of exposure. However, here I would also argue that relevancy and trends may play a role in the virality and should be added to the contagious characteristics. My TikTok videos did get more views and this may be down to the relevancy of the video topic and trends I implemented in the video. At the time of publishing my videos, there was much debate about student mental health in the semester just gone due to the reports of the deteriorating mental health within university students. Therefore, the topic I had chosen had relevancy to the public conversation. Not only that, but I utilised video trends that were seen throughout TikTok at the time to ensure my videos would be relevant for the platform. This included the role play video of which I played two people in a scenario. This is seen across the platform to discuss many topics. From this reflective observation, it's apparent that I've learned a great deal about how media goes viral. I learned that different contagious characteristics work better in different genres of video to aid virality and maybe trends and relevancy is missing. Steps has definitely changed the way I look at viral videos on social media now, and I see if I can spot any of the contagious characteristics when I watch them, and more often than not I can. Therefore, to ensure I take everything on that I have learnt into the future, I've created an action plan to try out what I've learned outside the academic environment. Cobb calls this active experimentation. As I'm moving into the public relations industry after I finish my studies, my curiosity of virality will not fade away. So I found a book that I will dip in and out of by David Scott called The New Rules of Marketing and PR to see how I can use different technology in my PR work. Secondly, to ensure I keep the skills I've learned up to scratch, my love for creativity won't stop as I'm planning on continuing to produce short videos implementing different aspects of the STEPS model to see what actually happens. This second part of the essay will discuss how my teamwork skills have developed within this module. At the beginning of this module, I was concerned about the group project in second semester as I didn't really know anyone after coming back from a year in industry. 
This was something that I wasn't too sure about as I knew the year would start off online. So I questioned how I would be able to get to know people as it made it harder to interact with them. It made me question what my teamwork skills would be like in a group project. However, there wasn't anything to worry about as in our first meeting back in February, my team and I seemed to gel from the get-go as we shared each other's videos from our first assignment to get some peer assessed feedback. Therefore, we could progress positively as a group taking on board our own feedback. Everyone seemed to think my TikToks were creative and this was something I wanted to ensure was brought to our team brief. As we started our group work, I came across a recently published article from Wildman et al on student teamwork during COVID-19. It found the challenges experienced, changes to team communication, tasks and roles, as well as the consequences to team progress and outcomes. Though what I took away from this was the ability to critically assess the potential challenges for our group from this research. For example, geographical differences was found as a challenge, and this was the same in our group, as we had two of us living internationally, meaning we could not reach campus as a group, and we had to take into consideration the differing time zones when we were arranging meetings. Therefore, as a team, we were considerate of each other, which laid the foundation of a supportive and comfortable environment. So now if you take a look at Tuckman's stages of group development, I believe this comfortable and supportive environment we built together allowed us to bypass Tuckman's storming stage in his model of group development. The storming stage is where the group are presented with a time of conflict, power struggles, frustrations and or tense times. The storming stage comes after the forming stage, which I believe we completed within the first three weeks as we had exchanged our previous videos as discussed earlier and got to know each other, what everyone's post-uni plans are and where everyone is locking down. Instead of experiencing the storming stage, we moved from the forming straight to the norming stage where we started to find more of a routine as a group, ensuring we had at least one meeting every week on a Wednesday at 1pm but if we felt like we needed more, we would find time to suit everyone, taking into account other members that were in China and Poland. We ensured the brief was the priority of the meeting and everyone knew what the brief was. Once we were provided with the feedback from our module leader on our outline plans, we took forward a video idea to progress with our pre-production phase, which allowed us to move on to the performing stage of Tuckman's model. This is where we spent the majority of our group project as we worked together to create deadline tables and solidify the feedback as we asked to meet our module leader, which highlighted the idea of bringing real life scenes and animation together would be a great idea. This meant we had to work cohesively as a team as a lot would be going on in our video, meaning there were a lot of different roles to be had. Therefore, knowing our own roles as well as everyone else's would be essential to success. For example, someone would be doing the animation and others would be dedicated to editing our script as we found it difficult to reduce such a complex article into four minutes. I was recording the audio as a voiceover as well as filming as a presenter with another member of the team in front of the camera. As I was presenting, I wanted to take on my feedback from my first assignment as our module leader felt the reality of mental health TikTok video was a little dry and overly formal, so just adding some emotion and being more relaxed would have helped. As we were in the performing stage of Tuckman's model, we were comfortable within our roles and team, so some of my team members gave me advice to be more relaxed on camera, such as slow down my speech or be a bit louder. I also ensured I was smiling and brought more emotion in my tone of voice to make it less formal. Whilst I'm filming this video essay, we completed the group project just over a week ago now and we are now on the adjourning stage where the group moves apart and moves on, keeping in contact and taking the experience with us. This is exactly what's happening right now. Once we submitted the group project, the team kept the Facebook group chat going as a support network during the assignment and exam period. We are also planning on meeting up as a team on campus for a drink after we've finished our exams and coursework. I can say for myself, I will be taking on this experience into the future of my graduate job as a PR consultant, where working in teams is going to be a fundamental aspect of my role. What our journey shows is that not every small group adheres to Tuckman's model conventionally. We were able to form bonds very quickly and started working as a collective group from the get-go, producing a comfortable environment so we never experienced any storms. What I have learnt from this project is a supportive and comfortable environment that helps the team work efficiently and effectively. This allowed us to be able to express creative ideas and concepts without feeling judged from one another. This was something I struggled a bit during my placement year as I felt like people would judge me if they didn't like my idea. I will therefore make a conscious effort to express the creative concepts I have in team meetings in my work after graduation. However, I am aware that not all teams will work so smoothly, but being aware of the storming stage that is discussed in Tuckman's model will mean I am prepared. So to conclude, I found that Verge's steps framework of contagious characteristics was extremely useful to use, keeping it in mind in the pre-production, production and post-production of my videos. I found that the social currency and triggers were the most useful and easily incorporated into the videos. However, I do think that adding relevancy and trends into the contagious characteristics would help with the virality of videos. This is including how relevant the format of the video is for the platform that it's going to be published on. 
the relevancy of the topics being discussed and the trending activities of that period of time. When I'm looking back at the beginning of this module, it's obvious I've learned a lot over this last year, which I hope comes across in this video essay. I have developed skills in pre-production, production and post-production using a range of software and equipment, creating short one minute videos and a longer four minute video, whilst understanding the importance of viral video theories in video producing. I've also built confidence in being able to share my creative ideas in a group environment, as well as being in front of a camera, which my team members also help me with. So I look forward to being able to put these skills I've learned in education into a working environment after university. So to any comms and media student at the University of Liverpool, I fully recommend taking the viral video module. It not only develops your theoretical skills, but also your practical skills as well. So that's the end of my video essay and don't forget to subscribe to Media Pool.